Hello and welcome, Chemistry Nation, to um, this video here where we are going to go through uh, the syllabus. Um, in this video, I've highlighted uh, my Section B class. Um, if you're in my other section, Section F, you realize that the syllabus is pretty much exactly the same, except for uh, times when we actually meet for lecture. Um, so I am your instructor, Eric Ruggles. Um, my office is in Innovation um, 333, or we can always meet over the virtual ethereal, which is basically uh, talking about, uh, you know, Teams meetings, uh, where we can meet, you know, virtually at any any time. So I have two sets of office hours as, as a result of that. Of that. Uh, the best way to get a hold of me is by email. Um, I check it quite a few times a day. I mean, obviously, if you're emailing me at 3 a.m., you know, it might be a little bit of time for me to get back to you. But um, but normally I'm checking in the morning and in the evening, uh, you know, sporadically. So uh, email is good because that helps us with office hours. With office hours, I really ask the students to make appointments. Um, you're more than welcome to swing by the office, but I might not be there, um, or I might be dealing with um, other students, in um, which case you would have to wait. Uh, so, so making appointments allows for really best use of your time as well as my time. Um, for in-office hours, I have Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 9 to noon. Um, so that's in Innovation 333. Um, and again, by, by appointment there. Um, or then, you know, any time for uh, virtual office hours, again, by appointment. And that's where that Teams, uh, you know, Teams platform will come into to play. So if you want to have a face-to-face, -face, uh, literally, um, try to swing in between Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 to noon. Again, setting up an appointment is very advantageous to that. Um, and then, you know, if you can't make those hours, um, you know, obviously I, I have about 400 students, so it's tough to meet everyone's schedule. Um, that's why we do the virtual meetings um, that, that'll work best for your, your time and, and my time. Um, class time for our B section is Tuesday, Thursday, one, I'm sorry, 2.50 to 4 o'clock um, for my... F section, I believe it's 1.15 to 2.30 p.m. Also Tuesday, uh, Thursday. So, uh, and those lectures are held in uh, Innovation in E102. Uh, I also say and Teams because I also will uh, stream the lecture live. Uh, over Teams as well. So if you are uh, sick or you have a sporting engagement or um, maybe at home for, a, you know, a birthday or, or something, maybe not so much as fun, um, you have access to the classroom through um, that virtual connection. Um, I also record all the class lectures so that you can actually peruse them at a later date. Uh, you know, when you're doing your homework or studying, etc. Of course, objectives here are really just to get into learning some general ideas of chemistry, such as, you know, atomic structure, stoichiometry of reactions, thermochemistry, quantum chemistry, forces of attraction, right? Um, as well as not only learning these different types of topics, um, but also to reinforce them with performing experiments in the laboratory so that's how we try to, you know, connect the two in terms of, you know, doing topic matter in the lecture and then reinforcing that with experiential learning, hands-on learning uh, in the laboratory. The textbook is new for this year. Um, so we're using uh, Chemistry Atoms First. Uh, this is the fifth edition by Burge and Overby. Um, if you go to McGraw-Hill Publishing, there's the the full text ISBN number um, uh, along with the uh, Alex 360 online access. We need both of those. Um, it doesn't have to be the physical textbook. It could be the e-text. Uh, 
but we also need then this Alex platform. The Alex platform is a way for us to also do homework in a different way. Um, we're going to have two different, you know, kind of modes of, of, of attacking homework, and it really depends on the student in terms of what they might prefer. Um, but all of our quizzes and all of our exams are actually going to be on this online platform as well. So um, we need to have the Alex platform in order to uh, take quizzes, take exams, um, as well as there being some really, I think, really good uh, homework um, ways to approach the homework. Um, and I'll be talking about that more in a different video. I think it needs its own kind of segue. Um, but we'll we'll get back into Alex, but we need both of these. And there's a couple of options in terms of, of buying. You know, there's the big loose leaf, which is really the physical textbook. Um, and Alex, uh, the, the, the weeks there that we see is um, for uh, the Alex program. Um, so, so for 52 weeks, uh, we, you can just have digital access, which would just mean that you have the e-text. And then Alex for an 18-week rental or a 52-week rental, um, you know, the, I don't know, the most bang for your buck, I suppose, is option one, um, given that you have the full, the full textbook. Um, but, you know, if you want to get really economical, then option two would, would, would be, um, you know, the most, op, you know, most economical. And to be honest, probably, you know, option three is, is really a nice one, too. You should have the full e-text. Plus, you have an extended time frame of Alex. Um, you know, the course here for Gen Chem is two semesters. So we have Gen Chem 1 this semester, Gen Chem 2 next semester. So that. So the most, uh, you know, I suppose the most bang for your buck is option one, which would be the, the full textbook, um, which you have, you know, purchased. Um, as well as an Alex for that 52 week scenario. Um, with the digital access, you would be losing the e-text after your rental is done. So you don't have that e-text indefinitely. So, um, so you lose that option, but the most economical would be option three, obviously. I'm, I'm sorry, option two, where, you know, you have the 18 week rental of the e-text and Alex. And then of course there's the middle option, which is really option three. Uh, assignments and lecture. So basically I've broken down all the chapters into modules. Um, and these are found in Brightspace by clicking the, the course home link. Um, not only are we changing the textbook this semester, um, we're also changing the entire EVM platform. We used to be on what was known as Blackboard. Now we're on what's known as Brightspace. Uh, so again, there'll be, uh, just like there'll be another video for Alex to help us out with that. There will also be another video for Brightspace to help us to start to, uh, learn how to manage or, you know, navigate that particular part of the course. Um, I would say that for all of us, teachers included, this is new. So, um, please give us a little bit of leeway, um, with the problems that might arise this semester as a result of using new programming, new software, et cetera. Um, but once you get on Brightspace, you can click the course home link, um, and there's where you'll find homework assignments. And each one is broken down by chapter, which I call a module. So module one, chapter one, module two, chapter two, et cetera. And then each module contains um, basically uh, lecture videos, homework problem assignments, and homework video examples of problems. So I, I try to, to give you a, a, as much information as I can in terms of I've recorded all of my lectures um, from, from a past year of, of COVID. So those are all um, there for us to see and, and utilize, um, as well as in problem sets that are tied directly into those lecture videos. Um, so watching a video and then trying the homework, there'll be that connection there. Um, and then if we're having difficulty, um, not only can you contact me instead of meetings, but I also post um, example homework problem videos um, to help the student out as well. So a lot of information in there in that homework assignments piece of the course uh, of the course home. Um, and so basically what we will do in lecture is we will, you know, 
cover new material. Now, my lectures are going to be really embodying two things, a very short lecture on concept and then working in problems, working in problems together as a class. So we're coming to class not only just you know, writing down notes in terms of the lecture, we're also going to be breaking out our calculators, breaking out the periodic table, um, working on problems together as a group um, to really get exercise in there as, as well, and also to keep our attention um, while, we, while we are participating in the course. In past years, when I would just lecture, students tend to fall asleep. So trying to engage in, you know, not only do small snippets of lecture, but also then problem solving keeps everyone attentive. Realize that you can always go to these lecture videos that are posted already, which are very in-depth lecture videos, um, much more in-depth than I get into during the normal class time frame. And then also realize I'm, I'm recording our in-class period. So basically what I will do, the assignments for each, each period will be you know, so after each class that we have, I will basically be assigning you um, or asking you to do the best in engaging in the lecture and homework uh, prior to the next class time frame. You might not get through all of it, but it's the attempt that's really important, which will make class time even more, more beneficial. And so the assignments are broken down into those two things, a lecture video and an actual homework assignment. So um, the lecture videos covers the new material, but don't be worried. I will be also talking about new material in the physical classroom as well. And then the homework problem sets are strengthening or backing up your connection with that, that concept. Um, I will stress this, that the homework problem sets are the meat and potatoes, the broccoli and seitan of the course. The more of these homework problems that you can do, specifically that you can do on your own without help from, you know, an outside resource or anything like that, the better off you will be. And, and that's where Alex might actually come into play in terms of making sure we do that, that type of practice. And then lastly, as I said earlier, we also have in that homework uh, video examples of me doing problems for you. So, so we, we have that as a resource. If we get stuck on a certain type of problem, we can see an example done in, in somewhat real time. Uh, and as I said, all of our class discussions will be recorded and posted. Uh, class time. We already talked about, uh, and again, that's meant to really be a student-led kind of question and solving, you know, an answer period um, where we um, work on problems together as a class. I ask for student participation, um, not necessarily for working the problem, but for answering the problem. And then we will always walk through the problem um, as well to make sure that everyone is, is on the same page. Right, and so again, this idea of the homework being assigned should be finished or at least attempted prior to coming to class. And it really will, that, that little effort of attempting or that, that grand effort of finishing uh, will really make then class time uh, much more fruitful and, and, and much more of a reinforcement to the knowledge that you're actually gaining. So that's the class time. Other types of information I, I provide or do throughout the semester is um, within uh, our course materials link within uh, Brightspace. Uh, sorry, that says BB there. That's a mistake I'm going to have to correct. That's old from Blackboard. Um, but this would be uh, Brightspace. Um, uh, I have posted old exams from 2017, 2018, and 2019. Um, there's also SI sessions, um, old SI sessions. These are student-led instructional sessions that we will also have in, in, in our semester, but these are old ones that are out there that, that can be helpful. Um, 
and I not only post these exams and SI, SI sessions, uh, but also post the keys to them. I post them separately, so you have a blank version, um, which you can work on as extra practice. You also then have, um, uh, you know, the answer key to check to check your work. Um, I, I would say, do not study these exams, or don't study the, you know, or you know, just the old exams because. You know, our exams are actually going to be a little bit different. They're going to be on Alex, so it's going to be somewhat of a different platform. These are old exams that were just on, you know, pen and paper, um, trying to get rid of the paper, right? Trying, trying to help help Mother Nature out with that. Um, the questions are very similar, however, so so it, it's not that, it's not that those old exams aren't valid. But a lot of students will just practice the old exams. And I want you to realize that from year to year, while the concepts remain the same, the, the question changes. And it's often that slight change in the question which um, really messes up students. Besides uh, providing extra practice with, with you know old exams, S, old SI review sessions, um, I also will do recitations or review sessions throughout the semester. Um, I will basically be holding these on our Monday evening slot from 6.45 to 7.45 p.m. And this is gonna be on, on Teams. So if you look at your class schedule, um, you have three kind of chemistry slots. One is the class, one is your lab, and then and one is this Monday evening um, session. Usually the Monday evening sessions are used for exams. Um, um, we're going to do something different this semester. Uh, they can still be used for exams, but if, if it's a, an evening, a Monday evening where we don't have an exam, um, I'm going to offer a review, a review session for anyone that has, you know, questions that need to be answered. So, um, they, they won't be continuous, you know, usually I find, you know, like after the first week that there's not many questions or after the the, the, the week of a, an exam, there's not many questions, but, but there will be plenty throughout the semester um, to get our questions answered. And, and that's going to be virtual. That's going to be completely over Teams, and I will send out Teams invites and stuff like that so that we make sure that we can, we can access that. Also, um, the Sunday before a mid-semester exam, I will also do um, an exam review session. And that's from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. and also on Teams. Um, so um, that Monday exam com is coming up. You know, I definitely will, you know, I, as, you know, most students get a little bit more, you know, uh, you know I wouldn't, I shouldn't shoot, use the word crazy, but, you know, get, get, you know, a little bit more anxious because of what's coming up. Um, and so I like to offer that, you know, two-hour section um on teams. In fact, it sees there it's nine to ten thirty. I'm I'm pretty sure that's going to be more like nine to eleven. Um, so I have some flexibility on that Sunday. So, so uh, what I do ask is that you show up on time um, to the session um, so that I'm I'm not repeating questions. So if if if, it's, if a student asks a question earlier in the review and then you show up late and ask the same question, I would then be directing you to the the video recording. Um, to get that answer um so um i want to make sure that we're we're facilitating it all you know for all students um so come prepared with questions I, these review sessions are not i don't have a uh lecture you know developed for the review sessions the review sessions are literally you've been working on the problems you have questions okay here's another time to get a hold of me and and let's work through these things and and answer those questions so be offering that throughout the semester. In terms of points, which we'll get more into later, but that revolves around homework questions, uh, or homework quizzes rather, uh, and then exams. Let's first talk about homework quizzes. Um, so there will be basically 10 graded homework quizzes. Um, there's gonna be 12 in total, um, but only the best 10 will be taken um, for this semester. Uh, and just finding my little mistakes that I've made here. Uh, 
is that uh, these assignments will be found on Alex, not Mastering Chemistry. I apologize. That's kind of the the old school uh, way of going. Um, so uh, we'll be talking about Alex again in that in that segment video that will be later. Uh, but basically, uh, we'll access that, access that through Brightspace um, and follow the, the Alex link. Um, again, another video coming our way to, to navigate Brightspace. Uh, but you will have basically about a week to complete each homework quiz. Um, you have a number of attempts, I believe three attempts to finish the quiz. Um, but, but the way the quiz is set up is that at the end of the quiz, you get a score. And then you can decide if you want to better that score. Um, and if you want to better that score, then you have to take basically a new quiz again. Um, and you can do that, uh, you know, three times, I believe. And it will then take the average of those three times you've done the quiz. So the idea would be, you know, depending on your score, you know, is it worth it for you to do the quiz again? Um, you know, also if our quiz score is, is, is low, okay, let's, let's practice a little bit and then come back to it and then, and then really change, change that average. Um, so it gives the student the chance to practice. There's, there's nothing, uh, holding you back from using help, using resources, um, to help you with the quiz, um, it's really just up to you to 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 finish it, um, and so there will be specific dates, and I will definitely communicate those dates uh, by uh, announcements. You know, as far as like, okay, the quiz is opening today at this time, closing this day at that time, and and when it closes, it closes. So there's no, you know, given the fact that there's one week to get these things done, um, there aren't really any exceptions to the quiz rule. All right. Um, you have two gimmies, um, you know, so that's why we're only doing 10 out of 12. Um, but then, you know, please realize that that, that is enough time to get this quiz, this, these quizzes actually done. Next we have exams, which is the big dog, uh, exams really are scheduled on our syllabus. Uh, for, or well, the schedule is from Mondays from 6:40 to 9:40 p.m. Um, that's oftentimes a, a, a hard time for students, it's late in the evening, um, all that. Um, but what we've decided to do, at least Professor Holchi and I have decided to do, is to give our exams and quizzes online via Alex, and we're going to allow everyone to have kind of an extended period to do this, to allow for flexibility and hopefully to allow for that stress level to, to, to somewhat drop. So, um, so, so this is the flexibility that we're offering. Um, basically the exams will be made available Sunday at noon, which is right after my review session. And they will be open till noon on the following Tuesday. So, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, you know, um, basically, you know, three days there to, to take the exam at your convenience when you feel ready to take it. Um, but that is the window. Um, so when you take the exam, you can take the exam at any time, but realize that once you start to take it, there's a time frame. There's only three hours to complete it. So it's not like you can start the exam on Sunday and then come back to it on Tuesday. Um, once you start it, you have to finish it. And that's, that's how it rolls. Um, so exams can't be, you know, saved and returned. Um, each of the exams that we write take no more than one and a half hours. I mean, that's for a really, that's for a good student. I'm not saying a really good student. I'm just saying a good student. Um, which is one and a half hours. Um, and so by that rationale, um, in terms of access and accom accommodations, um, uh, these will not apply to those mid-semester exams. The final will be different. 
but for the mid semester exams, um, the accommodation time thing um, isn't warranted. Uh, the final is a different. It's a different exam. It's more cumulative, and so um, definitely we will be talking about access accommodations um, for that. And if you do have access accommodations, um, please feel free sooner than later to discuss those with me um, so that we can make sure that we're putting you in the proper environment um, um, for, for, for your learning. Um, uh, Alex 360 has basically a, a formula, you know, like, you know, useful information sheet um it, it has a periodic table um you can use any calculator that you want um it's fine um but one thing i would stress is that you know that it's your best interest to keep up with alex and how it works um you know because you know since your exams and quizzes are going to be on there um, you want to make sure that you have the syntax correct, you know, how you're entering the, the answers correct so that you're not, you know, losing points on those 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 subtle things. Um, you know, the more, the more you use it, the, the better you'll get at it. And then so, uh, again, uh, once that exam closes on Tuesday at noon, that, that's done. Any work after that will not be graded. Again, that's not saying that I understand that there's going to be sickness and, and, and thing, things of that nature, you know. So for those issues in terms of those sickness accommodations, you need to go through the dean's office. And then, uh, and then we can discuss. Sorry, my pens are at the end here. My tablet. So, so the, and, and we'll come back to this in, in a little bit, but um, if you're sick for an exam or whatever, or even, you know, even a quiz type thing, so again, I think the quiz is there's enough time uh, to be able to get this done uh, with the seven day motif. But for exams, yes, I understand sometimes we, we, we get sick and it's harder to, to, to um, be able to, to take the exam in our, at our best quality. Um, if you really are sick, contact your dean's office. They will verify the sickness. They will then send a letter to me saying as such, and then we can discuss an alternative time. Um, we can't delay the time forever. Um, it has to be a quick kind of, you know, turnaround uh, because we won't, we're always moving forward. So, um, but that's something we can discuss. We, you know, we do have the ability to bend to that idea um but we're not going to break to the idea of scheduling an exam three weeks after it was given um it has to be it has to be current uh so here are the four exams uh the 18th of september october 16th november 13th december 14th we gave the time of the final but i mean again the final will be very much the same we're going to have we're going to have a, a, a you know a three day window to take it, so um, I'll, I'll do more with announcements of that when we get closer uh, to the final. Um, and if you're interested in final exam policies, there's a link to that. Some other things that are part of the grading scheme this semester uh, is uh, group presentations. Um, I thought this would be a fun way to just try to allow for two things. One, um, connection with your peers, connections with other freshman students, other students that are part of our class, um, possibly part of your major, 
um, and and to have that 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 beginning of some camaraderie. Um, the the other is to just start to explore research, right? To try to explore like how we look up things and how we can start to divine, you know, what we actually enjoy. Um, so I'm breaking up uh, the whole class into groups. The groups are approximately seven to ten people. Um, and we'll find those groups on on Brightspace. And I will also be sending out announcements trying to, you know, trying to connect us all to the groups. Each group has their own discussion page so that they're already connected. So it's not like I'm sharing emails or anything like that. Um, you know, so that's that's where that will start. And so the idea is to basically pick a scientist. Um, doesn't have to be a chemist. It could be a, any type in the environmental scientist, biology scientist, you know, what what have you. Any scientist that you feel that your group is all in time, you know, in, in connection with. So, so that's what the goal is right here to pick a relatively current assi a scientist which has some type of impact on your group that, you know, that, that expires your group to, to work in, in the science, you know, avenue. Um, obviously, we're going to have groups that have multiple different majors. So we have to, you know, you know, make sure that we're being understanding of each other's principles and, and, and all that and work together as a group. Um, but I'd rather it be new scientists than the old dogs because the old dogs are all these just white old chemists and, you know, it'd be good to know what's going on in, in the, the newer community, um, which is where I think you can find a lot of inspiration. So where what will happen is there's going to be an Excel file um, that I'm going to post within course materials that will include all the groups um, and there'll be a date. I, I, I apologize. The date there it is 10 2023 is when we need to identify the student, the, the scientists that we want. Um, so I want all groups to basically fill in that Excel file with their scientists. Um, I actually don't think it's going to be an Excel file, that's how I kind of thought it would work out. I think it's going to be more just like in the discussion. Uh, so in each group, you have a discussion page about this topic. And so each group will say, hey, I want to, I want to pick, you know, this person or I want to pick this person. Um, and then I'm going to go through them and make sure that we don't have any doubles. So that, you know, and that's first come, first serve. So if, if your scientist is already picked, I might come back with you. Well, hey, sorry, you got to pick a new one. Um, because we want to see some differentiality. Um, at the end of the semester is when the presentation is actually due. Um, presentations, I want to be caught on video and then uploaded into, um, this, this scientist presentation folder. Um, we're going to have to have probably some more insight onto this. This is a new thing that I've been trying to doing this semester. So, um, it's, I believe where it is going to be is actually within the actual group, uh, discussion, uh, or discussion group. Um, so that's something that I might have to, to change here. So, uh, I'm not sure about this course materials page here. But when doing so, what we want to make sure is, is that, is it, and I'm trying to be light here. All I want is three or four PowerPoint slides. You know, we can have slide one with an introduction, including the history degree, maybe universities that the scientists attended to. Um, slide two, the work that they did, whether that be graduate or undergraduate contributions. Slide three, why did you pick the scientists? What did they contribute to the world or world of research? And then 
slide four, basically a summary. Um, again, this is a new feature of the course. I'm, and I'm really, I'm totally excited to see what what we you all do to do for this. Um, and 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 we will be definitely talking about more about this in class and make sure that we're very, very, very clear um, about our expectations and what we need to do. Um, again, this is just this is a run out version to see how, how, how it goes. But we will make sure that everyone is clear with it. The other cool new thing that we're doing this semester is I've been working on a study with meditation and scientists. Um, not necessarily scientists, I guess, but, but, but since I deal with mainly students who want to become scientists, um, that's, that's who I'm, I'm talking to. That's my audience. Um, I enjoy meditation. Meditation is a great way for me to connect, um, you know, to other people, a way for me to connect to the world, um, a way for me to connect to, uh, you know, stress and anxiety and, and, and reduce it. And I know that all of you out there have a lot of stress and anxiety. So, so, so I love to do research chemically. I mean, I'm still, I'm a research professor in biochem. I still love mixing chemicals, but I also now like to do this socially, which is why we are going to do this meditation study. And so basically throughout the semester, um, we're going to have just little snippets at the beginning of class, which deals with meditative practices. Um, this is something that's voluntary. I mean, I'm going to be doing it in class anyways. Um, but I'm also going to be asking for students to fill out very short surveys from week to week, you know, as well as myself constructing notes week to week um, to see, see how you as a class respond to this idea of, of, of meditative uh, practices. Um, some of us might have no knowledge. Some of us might have more knowledge. Um, but I'm just trying to give us little snippets of this. These are very small sessions, like three minutes to maybe five minutes total at the beginning of each class. And I have them all listed in the tentative lecture schedule, um, which is below in the syllabus. Uh, but I'm hoping that this helps us be more attentive to, to what's being taught, more alert to what's being taught, um, but also to be just retrospective in our life um, and, and help to relieve stress and anxiety as these things come at us throughout the, the semester. So I'm hoping to give you another tool set to possibly help you um, in things that come naturally uh, uh, through life. Um, I found that students like this, you know, I found some students that don't like it, um, but we're just trying to figure out like, is there is there is there a real you know structure to this in which you know students on the whole you know find some relaxation and and lowering of these anxiety and stress levels as a result of this type of you know weekly focus so every tuesday and thursday we'll do a short very short meditation scheme to see how it goes a lot of these videos that we're going to be looking at or listening to so I believe that this looking into you know meditation will be really helpful for all of us and and again it is a survey uh, class um, it's voluntary you know throughout the week you know basically once a week I'll be asking you to fill out a survey, quick, you know, a couple of, of questions, um, just to see how it's working with you or how it's not working with you. Um, again, most of these videos are on uh, EVM Mindfulness, on Headspace websites. Uh, EVM Mindfulness is free, uh, and there's lots of, there's a wealth of information there, more than what I'm trying to present or trying to to initiate you to. Um, Headspace actually has a lot as well. Um, uh, but I, I I say free here at the bottom here 
Um, but I just learned that that's only free for uh, instructors. So if you want to, uh, you know, pay for your Headspace account, that please feel free to do so to explore everything that that the website has to offer, or the app that has to offer. Um, I'm not requiring it. It's not a requirement. Um, but I will be posting some videos from that account. Uh, so you, you can still access those through the syllabus, which we'll see later down um, the path here. So that's the lecture. Next is the lab. Um, lab, you know, is something you're going to get a lot more information when lab actually begins. Um, but it doesn't begin for the first two weeks. So you have two weeks of no lab in the beginning of the semester, and then labs actually start to, start to begin. Um, I kind of have to go through and check all these blackboard things. There we go. Um, so we're going to find that all of our experiments are going to be found online. That's going to be on Brightspace, uh, where you'll have PDFs, and you need to print out these experiments before lab. Uh, some things we need to get at the bookstore is the lab notebook. Also, we have to have safety eyewear. Uh, you know, we, we got to be really careful with the safety eyewear. I mean, um, you know, eyes are so, so very, very important. Uh, so if you buy from the bookstore, you're going to be fine. You know, there's two versions. There's the, the, the glasses um, and then the, the super spelt, you know, green goggles type of thing. Um, the green goggles or the white goggles, uh, are the best. I mean, they definitely keep everything out. So I would definitely recommend those. Um, personally, I never really liked them. So I always was one that would wear safety glasses. Now, nothing wrong with safety glasses, but I will say this, uh, down here at the bottom with contact lenses, um, you should not be wearing contact lens lenses in the lab. Uh, contact lenses is a polymeric material. Um, and, uh, if you got, you know, something in your eye, like a little sodium hydroxide, um, you know, if it, if it was a person that did not have contacts, they could easily flush their eye out, um, with water and there, there, it would, it would be fine. Um, for a contact lens user, um, that could cause actually the lens to actually fuse to the eye or fuse to the cornea. And, and that's, a, that's a whole different ball of wax, um, and a whole different way for us to, to, to respond to your need. Um, so basically if you have contact lens wear, um, you have to realize that that is a potential health hazard and you should just wear your glasses. Most people that have contact, uh, contact, you know, uh, you know, contacts, actually have a spare set of glasses and and if i that's what i would wear is a spare set of glasses then you can choose with a spare set of glasses whether you want to wear the goggle or whether you want to wear safety glasses that go over your glasses right um those are both acceptable um if you are a student that only has contacts um then you have to make yourself aware to the ta um, so that they know that you do not have a spare set of glasses. Um, also, you should not wear um, safety glasses at all. You should only wear safety goggles. Um, but you have to do both those two things if you only have contacts. A, talk to your TA to let them know. And B, only wear goggles. Um, because, it, it, like I said, it's, it's, it's a different beast. Um, with, with that contact. So that's safety eyewear, which is important. Lab attire is also important. Um, we cannot have, you know, certain uh, items, you know, in terms of, you know, basically the best thing to wear is full pants and a shirt with at least short sleeves or a shirt with long sleeves. Um, but anything like shorts or Capris um, are not allowed. Um, no, no exposure of the shirt. You know, in terms of shoulders, midriff, or back, those are not allowed. Full shoes, right? Preferably, 
Um, so there's there's no Chacos, there's no uh, Birkenstocks, there's there's none of that open toed shoe. Um, um, they're definitely not allowed, which we see here. Um, and basically, if you arrive in, in, in proper attire, the TA has the right to throw you out of the class. Um, and we don't want that, um, as we'll find in the grading scenario. Um, so, you know, we do have extra glasses, extra goggles that can be rented from the stock room. Um, but we don't have extra shoes and pants, etc. cetera. So, so make sure you're ready to 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 perform that experiment that day. You know, maybe that's throwing those clothes and proper shoes in your backpack, but make sure you, that you're ready. Prior to start, we need to have everything ready. Right? That's for those two weeks. Lab notes, safety glasses. Um, last, I gotta still walk through this document, get rid of all the blackboard stuff. Um, attendance, this is the big one. Now, attendance in class is one thing, but attendance in, in, in the lab is different. So, if you miss more than two labs, you were, will receive an F for the course. That's an F for the entire course. That's not just the lecture or the lab. That's the entire course. So we decided as a chemistry department that, you know, you have 10 experiments in lab that you need to do. And eight of the 10 is really what would define you then as being, you know, successful or at least in our idea, successful in in understanding the material. So this is where transparency is really important, that if you are sick, you need to contact myself and Christine Cardillo, which we find her email at the bottom here, to tell us that you are sick. Hopefully we can reschedule you into a new lab and then you can still make up that lab with no problem. In the event of that, then it just becomes the fact that if it's excused, those points won't be cost against you. If you flake and, and just miss a lab, well, then you get a zero for that lab, and those points do count for you. So if you are sick, you need to go through those proper requirements, you know, one contacting Christine Cardillo as far as if it's a lab, you know, thing. But B, just like we talked about earlier, you have to go through your dean's office so that they can send an email letting us know that, you know, there's a problem and we need we need some assistance. So, so keep that in mind. If you miss more than two... It's an automatic F, and I don't want anyone to have that happen. Uh, prior to lab, there's a bunch of lab videos, um, which are showing you what you're doing that day. Um, that's a great resource to kind of get some information as far as the setup of the apparatus, you know, some of the calculations, what's going on there, um, and that can help you with filling out your, your lab report, you know, after the lab is done. The lab format is pretty much two hours and 45 minutes. What we do is a introductory lecture, um, but then there's also um, kind of like a review session that we throw in. It depends on the time of the lab. Sometimes the labs are super long, or, well, I, I shouldn't say super long, but but are long, and so we need to really get into the lab and, and dive into the experiment. And then other times, they're, they're not as long. And so what we do is offer kind of like a mini recitation at the beginning of lab 
um, and then get into the lab. So, so another way of, of, of review. But you will get um, more information about all of this that first day of lab with your TA as they walk through the syllabus um, with you. Course grades. So we have a lot of sections for chemistry uh, 31. And so we always don't offer ranges for grades. We tend to wait till the end of the semester to try to pull things together and, and see where our point scheme should actually be. Um, but believe me, um, they tend to be pretty standard. Um, but we just always wait until we see what's going on. Because we're changing things as we go throughout the semester. You know, to that, this semester we're changing the idea of, you know, the presentation idea. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're changing point schemes here and there. And so we just, we like to talk before we assemble those actual grade barriers. But what we have is basically what I like to say is a thousand points. We have 750 points from the lecture. Um, and then we have 250 points from the lab. That's basically a thousand points. And that also is the idea of the credit system that the, the course is three credits, the lab is one credit. And so that's where the 750 comes from for three credits. And, and then, you know, the 250 from the one credit. Um, so that's how we break it down. Um, Mid-semester exams, we have three of those. Each one is 125 points. The homework, we have 10 of those. There are 12. We're going to take the top 10, so it's 125 points. We then have our presentation, which is 50 points. And then lastly, we have the final. And since the final will be not completely cumulative, but, but you know, uh, a basis of new material and cumulative material, that's why it's worth a little bit more than the uh, 125 that we see for, for, for the, the common exam. So with 375 and 125, right, we get our, we get our 500, we then have 550 and then 750 with the presentation of the final. Now, one thing that I do to help us all out is that the lowest mid-semester exam can be replaced um, by the percentage on the final. So I know we always have a low ball. You know, there's always, you know, this part of the semester where things get crazy, multiple assignments, multiple, I don't know, relationships, right? Things just get crazy. And so, like, for instance, if we look at example one here, we find that they started good at the beginning with exam one, but exam two was a low ball. And then exam three was okay. And then the final was a 75%. So notice that change that then occurs in terms of how I would actually count the scores. That, that okay, the final was a 75%, the lowest was a 45% for the mid-semester. So that 45 gets thrown out and a 75% replaces it. Or we have example two, where the student actually did pretty well throughout the semester um, the lowest actually was the final, um, and so that's, it doesn't get, it doesn't swap anything, because it's, it's not, um, higher than the lowest mid-semester exam grade, so, so, you know, if you get a low, you know, mid-semester exam grade, realize that, you know, you're not, you know, 
you're not dead in the water or anything like that. You still have the potential um, to to get past it. Uh, then we have laboratory, which is that extra 250 points or 25 percent of the grade. Um, again, your your TA will go through all of this stuff as far as you know what the points are always associated with. Well, we have usually a lab safety quiz at the beginning of the semester. This is something that needs to be done before the first lab. Um, and then each lab will consist of pre-lab, technique, and post-lab uh, calculations. Um, but you'll get more information from your lab TA there. And then it's just, it's just an additive thing um, where we have... Our lab portion of the course, we have our uh, lecture portion of the course, and that gives us our total points. And we're basically dividing that by a thousand. There'll be a little bit of extra credit at the end of the semester, um, but it will not be huge. It'll 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 be it'll be you know probably around two percent or three percent. Academic integrity, uh, don't cheat. Pretty simple. Hate being the bad guy. And reporting someone trying to cheat and going through that that rigmarole of of bureaucracy, which which can happen. Do your own thing. You know, realize this is your learning. This is this is this is your deal. Like you want to learn. Like, don't cheat. Cheating is not learning. After that, we get into tentative lecture schedule. This is how I am hoping the class will evolve. It doesn't say how it will evolve in terms of time frame. Um, but basically, week to week, I'm showing you all the problems that I'll be assigning, um, which we see, you know, here. Um, believe me, I will be doing announcements as we go, so I will definitely help in diversifying these questions and saying that, okay, this is what we're covering today, this is what we're covering on Thursday, et cetera, so that, you know, it's not like you're trying to figure out what I need to do, um, but these are the questions that I'm going to be pulling from in terms of the actual textbook. Remember, there's also the Alex version, which we'll talk about in the Alex segment video. But these are straight from the textbook. Also, I'm posting those mindful meditation studies. Um, these are links, but these are links that we will do in class. So you're more than welcome to look at them before class, um, but realize that this will be happening in the first two minutes or the first three minutes of class that will take a dive into meditation, right? And then remember, I will give us assignments not only in terms of class lecture and class videos of, of, of problem helping or problem solving attempts, also homework problems, but then just a survey of saying, okay, here's you know, five questions really quick. You know, what did you gain from this? What what did you feel you didn't gain? Right? That's the important piece to that mindful meditation study. So this tentative schedule has that all of that, as well as other dates such as last day to add class, Labor Day, etc. As we go down through, we see the full mindfulness studies that we're gonna be talking about from Tuesday to Thursday. And then we have our exam, All right? And so exam one on the 18th is chapters one, two, and three. Got a feeling we'll get through all three, chapter three, but I put a star, double star there because it just depends on our progress in lecture. I'm not expecting us to get to material that we have not discussed in lecture. So, so you know, the amount of information with uh, exams um, definitely depends on that idea. So as we go through, you can see that this is repetitive. 
going through the what we're going to cover from week to week. There's our group presentation. Scientist choice done for us. And we just keep walking through that semester. Thanksgiving holiday, which I'm sure we would be excited for. We get finals week. We get video group week. So we have everything here at the end. Uh, the, the finals week aspect, since it won't be finals week, I'm not asking us to watch these mindful meditations, but you might actually find them helpful in that finals week motif. So, and like I said, these are all very, very, very short, like five minutes, you know, three minutes uh, type of things. And then we have our final exam. Uh, it's, it is cumulative in a sense. Um, but I would say that about 60% of it is going to be on the new material that we haven't covered. Because if we look back, there's exam three, and then we have chapter 10, 11, and 12. So I would say this is going to be about 60% old. I'm sorry, let's do that. That's not correct. You know, something like this, 60% old, uh, 60% new, sorry, 60% new, and then 40% old. Um, the, the Where we're supposed to be at is, is at, you know, 4.30 to 7.15 p.m. on the 14th in innovation, you want to too, but we're going to do this just like we did with the mid-semester exams. We're going to be, going to give you three days to do the exam. Um, it's up to you when you decide to choose to do that. Um, uh, access accommodations are, are, are good because it is more of a cumulative exam. So just need to, uh, talk to me. about extra time um, uh, and and then we'll and then we'll go from go from there so so it doesn't have to be that you're taking the final at 430 we could find again a, a, like like a, a three-day time frame so that gives you some um, flexibility with your other classes your other finals your other presentations uh, getting into the last bits of it, here is our lab schedule. Um, notice that for the first two weeks, we don't have a lab at all. Um, and then we start to check in and get things going, right? So before that check-in date, you will need to have that safety uh, lab quiz done, watch the safety presentation, make sure you have your classes, your goggles, your your proper attire uh, going into um, the actual lab um, and and that all become uh, you know more apparent uh, because we will be posting not on blackboard but on brightspace um, you know all of that all of that information for you so you'll see that as courses within your Brightspace link. But here's the experiments that we'll do and what they conform to in terms of the modules. Um, and then lastly, uh, you know, access accommodations, um, please, um, you know, go here into the Living and Learning Center uh, if you need access accommodations. Uh, whatever that might be, there's there's so many accommodations out there. Uh, realize that, you know, mid-semester exams, there are no time accommodations. Um, but for the final, there is. Uh, and so keep that in your mind. Um, and, then, and then lastly, um, other accommodations like religious holidays or illness. Um, 
again, with religious holidays, I'm not up on all the religions and their holidays. So um, if you are a practitioner and there is a, a conflict, you need to just talk to me about that. Um, these are things that are, are on the calendar already. So you just need to, to let me know um, that there is a conflict so that we can um, uh, you reschedule something that is going on. Uh, and then the more the one that tends to happen a little bit more is the illness. And so remember, in terms of accommodations for illness, we want to contact your college's dean's office so that they can report the illness to all your professors. So everybody knows what. Sorry. So that everyone knows your your illness, and 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 we can then do accommodations, um, you know, after you know talking with you about it. Um, that's the same thing that goes with COVID. Uh, again, let's be you know responsible. If we're feeling sick, um, don't come in and and get other people sick. Um, my class is very open to checking in through, you know, uh, the fact that I actually, you know, video record the classes. I actually stream the courses live. You know, there's no reason to come into class if you're feeling super sick. But that doesn't mean that you can't interact with the class, um, you know, in your safe environment. So, so keep that in mind. Um, the last piece is really just ways for you to contact other people. So we have health and safety, you know, in terms of well-being, uh, counseling services that are offered on campus. Um, we have the alcohol and cannabis statement, which means like that doesn't really help you to learn. Um, it really does not. Um, and then for our diverse community that we have, at UVM, we have a lot of places to go and to reach out to people of similar sexuality, uh, similar faith, um, similar race, you know, such as the intern, the, the, the Interfaith Center, the Mosaic Center for students, the PRISM Center, um, um, Women and Gender Equity Center, etc. These are all great resources to find, you know, people of like mind, um, like conscience. Um, and lastly, great appeals, uh, just the, the, the process of doing that, which that never really comes up. Um, we're always very open about talking about grades. And then lastly, FERPA, basically saying, I will not talk to your parents at all. <laughs> In fact, I don't answer any emails from parents. So um, know that you're, you're safe there. So that is, as I scroll way, 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 way back, is our syllabus for the fall. A lot of information here. Um, generally, if you have a question, you can find that answer here within this document. I don't have a problem answering questions, of course, uh, you know, over, you know, in person or, or, or in teams. Um, but also, I would ask you to realize that there is a document here that, that has pretty much all the answers. So take a look at the syllabus before you start um, going to the next step. But uh, obviously, if you have more um, questions, don't, uh, you, know, you know, feel free um, to ask. So that is the syllabus for this fall.